Hello and welcome to the new episode of Working Software Series. Today I'm going to talk to you about processing plain text. You will often, as a programmer, face the need to process input text. Sometimes large chunks of text, sometimes text with complex structure. What will you do when that happens? And why would you need to process text in the first place? Well, let's start. Let's start from this last question. Why do you process text? You process text because it is human readable. There's not much use of text beyond that. Text comes from people, normally from humans. And software needs to take over and do smart things with that text and maybe something else to produce some, some output. So it all begins with human producing text for the computer to understand. In this presentation, I will use text which I am consuming in my tool through which I'm uh, holding uh, live talks in uh, Visual Studio, live coding sessions. If you watched any of my prior presentations uh, with the live coding, uh, typically conference talks, you must have noticed that I am using some snippets engine which is making uh, live coding very efficient. I can produce large quantities of code in no time. I will show you how that comes to be, how that, uh, how those snippets are produced and executed. And then I will show you what problems I'm facing in that tool and I will try to improve it. That will include a lot of text processing and that will be the demo for, for, for today's session. All right, so this is the sample talk, which I held some month or two ago. All my live talks are produced using, using this snippet XML format. It is Visual Studio's format for snippets. Every snippet has a header and a body. And the body is the code. What I am doing in my live talks is to organize code so that it has comments that begin with the, with the signature of the snippet. Like SNP01 means snippet number one, then snippet number two. And uh, when I press a shortcut on, uh, on a keyboard, my tool, my extension, Visual Studio extension is finding the comment for the upcoming, the, the first, uh, smallest snippet number that was not consumed yet, that wasn't expanded yet. It finds it in the source code. It could span multiple lines or just one line. And when I press the shortcut again, it replaces it with this. And that is how that extension works. It's very simple. The trouble is that when I am preparing talks, I have to edit XML. And that is very inconvenient. Sometimes I damage the XML and my tool reports an error that I have to find where it is. The whole format is cumbersome. There's a lot of copy and paste work to produce this XML file. And there is another, there is a limitation to this way of working because all I can do with the Visual Studio snippets is to use snippets. I cannot do anything more than that. And I want more. I don't want viewers to see these comments because they are obtrusive. And also, I want to have this tool, this same presentation live coding tool, to be used in recording video courses. And when doing that, these comments must definitely must not appear. So I want to move this format into something better, something that is not only about snippets. I have already made the first step in that direction by automatically translating this XML into a text file. So my tool is currently not processing this XML file when I'm 
giving a live talk. Instead, it is processing a text file, which I'm going to show you right now. I have a tool, a command line tool, which is called deploy. And I can deploy my talk like this is sample. This is in the sample directory. This directory contains, contains the, the entire talk demo, including slides and everything. And I can just tell it to copy everything. I don't want to hold the talk right now. I just want to copy it. And here it is. The tool has expanded this directory, this sample directory into this directory. Okay. Let's see what lies there. Here is the, the source code. And there is this live coder directory, which contains slides and the script. And the script is not that dot snippet format anymore. It is something else. This is the textual script, which is only declaring the snippets. Again, the snippets. But creating this textual format was the first step in moving away from the snippets because text allows many other things to be specified in it. For example, I can write a free form script, some, some kind of an action script for manipulating Visual Studio, like file something CS dot line containing, I don't know, byte row equals uh, stuff like that, dot select, then type byte row is something else. I can write a script. And then again, just press the shortcut and things will appear on the screen, producing an impression that I was actually typing on the keyboard. It is both effective on, on the live talk and very useful when recording a video. There will be no comments visible in the source code. And so I want to process this text, including including these commands, this entire scripting language, I want to, to process that. How do I do that? If you go to, to my Git, GitHub uh, account, okay, you will find the live coder. I think that is the name of the repo. Yes, this is the live coder tool, which is actually consuming this uh, script file and executing it at runtime. You can play with that if you like. It is, the, this repo is public. I will now write some code in a separate solution just to demonstrate to you how text file can be processed in a very organized, tractable way and then moved step by step from a primitive solution to a very complicated and powerful solution, so that in the end you can even extend the format into much looser form like this. As I progress, you will learn what wishes you can make about the format of the text so that your program can still cope with that, because you cannot do just anything you like. Not everything can be parsed. And there is a word for that. If this textual format is non-deterministic, then you won't be able to parse it and to be certain about what your code will do. For example, if I said here snippet 01 and 01 until, is this the same thing as this here? No. And how do I know that? Because I have this strict format snippet zero one until this mark, which marks the end of the snippet. And so everything that precedes the end mark will be considered a data, a piece of data rather than commands. So this will not be treated as this command here. You need to have these explicit elements in your text if you wish to process it with a program. When I said that uh, text is normally coming from humans, you still must 
put some boundaries on what humans can write to your program and what they cannot write. Then comes the question, how do we process text? There is one general approach and basically I only know one single approach to processing text because it is so powerful and so simple that I don't see the reason why would anyone invent anything else but this. Do you know what word text means? What is this? This is some text. The word text comes from medieval times and it has the same root as the word texture. Texture like a woven material texture. That is how people started calling the written things in the past. It looks like a picture, like a drawing. If you move away from it, you will see the texture. And so you will see that this first thing, that this, for example, this here is the texture that is, I will call it A. That this second part is something I will call B. Maybe I have recognized A again. And then I don't know, C something else. While processing text, you will recognize these patterns, this texture in it. And then you will forget that there are so many letters here, that there is punctuation, there's stuff, I don't know. And you will only focus on these replacement, these names for those things. Like ABAC. Does ABAC mean something to you? If yes, then you have understood text. If no, you would say, oh no, there is a syntactic error. Before A, there must be some D and then there must be a D again after it. That is how you process text in a very general way, in a very general sense of the word processing text. These names you, you assign to segments of text are called lexemes. And the process of turning text into a sequence of lexemes is a lexical analysis. You will analyze text, try to understand elements and give them names. And each lexeme, or also known as token, has only two attributes you will care to know about. Kind or type. I'm avoiding name type because I don't want you to mix it with a programming type. It is a kind of a like same, this A, B, C, and D. And value, because A might have this value here. So this is like same A. And where was that next? This was an, another A. So they can have a different value, actual value, but they are the same kind. For instance, where is that script? Here it is. This could be like same snippet, like same number, like same uh, until, that is, this is the keyword until, then the uh, ending mark. And this entire line of text would be, uh, also, there is an invisible end of line here. So there would be another like same line break, okay, with value backslash n. So this entire line of text would be turned into S N U E L. And this has a meaning. I know that this is the, the snippet header. And now I have understood text. I have understood the piece of text and I can process it by pulling out the values. So this is uh, the header for the snippet number one. Later on, there would be S uh, N number two, etc. And I will pull out the value number two. That is how you are understanding text and pulling out specific values because you always care about those specific values. Everything here except number one is garbage. It is only there to make processing of this text deterministic.
That is very important. So you will ask a human to edit, to write this script. You will offer a textual format because it is much easier than uh, writing a, an XML file. So you will do a favor to your user. But on the other end of the equation, you will ask your user to be very strict, to strictly follow the rules of your textual format, or otherwise your tool will not understand what this text file is, is telling. And so we have this term lexical analysis. You will always perform lexical analysis first. In very simple cases, lexical analysis will be all you need because if you look at this, if you look at, at, at this block here, it is one single block followed by another block with exactly the same format. So I might define another lexame, which is a content. Now observe what I'm doing. I'm not selecting the end of line, the new, new, uh, new line character at the end of the, the first line because it belongs to the first line. You must be strict when processing text. I'm starting from this character here. This is the first character in what follows the end snippet clause. But end of line here belongs to content. You must be strict about things like that when processing text. There must be no gaps between lexemes because if I left this end of line belong to nobody, then you understand what is the consequence. There is a letter which belongs to nobody. Well, how do I process that? You have to attribute every single character in text to some lexeme. And so this will be the content. It will be, I don't know what is written there. And then there comes another mark and the new line after it. So that is this um, the E and uh, okay, new line. This is one block that represents the entire code snippet. If I understood this block, I can simply pull out the number and the content and drop everything else. That is text processing. So actually this is L, then comes the content, then uh, the ending mark, and this is one snippet. The most, the simplest of all text processing tools you can make is the one that expects one fixed pattern to repeat itself for the entire file. If you can do that, then you're done. You can just pull out those elements you care about, this and this, turn them into a table and that's it. And that is precisely what I will do and I, I, it will take maybe half an hour and I will be done. Then how do you do that? That is the question. One typical way to extract these lexemes is to define regular expressions for each of them. You can, let me return back to this text here. I'll make it a bit shorter. Okay, so, so you have a text. How do you process this text with regular expressions? You would define regular expressions which are covering all distinct appearances that are legal in your text. And then you will find matches in the text in a very specific way. You would put a cursor at the beginning of the text and ask, I have, say, five regular expressions. Which one is matching this? It could happen that even multiple regular expressions are matching the upcoming text. Maybe you can match this and this. For example, if you are, if you know any of the C like C++ like languages, you know that you can write X++. What does the plus mean? It means addition, but what if it is uh, followed by another plus? Then it means, in, means increment. So you could recognize a longer phrase, longer uh, lexeme, or a shorter one. There is a general rule which is very useful in processing text, and that is to pick 
the regular expression which is matching the longest section of text starting at the current cursor position. So you would turn this into A. And your cursor, your cursor will now be here. Then you need to recognize white space. Okay, let's say that we have a white space regular expression. Then you would recognize B all until here and cursor moves here. Then you recognize S. The point is that you must always recognize text at the cursor position. What if nobody recognizes anything that starts here, like A, ADS, ADSL, nothing, nothing is recognized. Then you have a syntactic error, or that is the lexical error. This is something nobody expects, like an open uh, curly brace. Nobody expects that. You can have a special lexeme which captures one letter and says, this is an error. And then your cursor has moved. There's another option for you, and that is to say that, uh, uh, to just throw an exception or generate um, an error right away, or say an error is everything starting here until the end of the file. You have options there to choose, and you do what, what makes sense in your problem domain. And then you capture more and more, and you are done. When you reach the end of the input text, you might insert the end of input, like same, and this is the result of lexical analysis. Each like same here will have its kind and the value which it has matched. And you end the lexical analysis phase with that. You need regular expressions which are covering all these elements of your script. And there, again, in simpler cases, when there is that uh, record-like structure which is fixed, there, 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 nothing is changing this structure, it's just, this looks like a table. If you do have that structure, then you could even do the craziest of all things, and that is to explain the entire block with a single regular expression. That applies to very simple use cases, but don't forget that option because that will make your life much easier. What I normally do is to visit the Regex 101 website. It is letting me create regular expressions and test them. It's very important to test your regular expressions because they are, they are normally complicated and very easy to, to get wrong. So I will paste this entire script and I want to process it with a regular expression. Let's see, snippet. There it is. I have matched the snippet. Then I want to have white space. I might allow multiple white spaces, but not zero, so it's a plus. I'm presuming that you are uh, proficient in regular expressions. If you are not, it's impossible to write software without understanding regular expressions. After the white space, there comes a digit, but multiple digits. Again, plus, not a star, not zero or more, but one or more. Then there comes more white space, then the word until, more white space, then there comes this delimiter and the snippet, okay? And then there comes a new line, it was matched, it wasn't marked here for some reason, uh, but it was matched. And then comes the content, which might be empty or anything, but look, this has matched, this any dot is any character, has matched this line, but it stopped at the new line character. It doesn't match new line. So I will have to say it like this. It's either anything or a new line. And now I have a problem because everything was matched. It got to the end of, of the file. Of course, that's not what I want. I want it to end with an end snippet and a new line. But it doesn't work. 
it is again matching the entire file. Why? Because regular expressions are greedy. They will run through the text for as long as they can. So as long as regular expression is matching any character or a new line, it will keep going and it will even overrun this end snippet mark. It will not see it. What you need is to say that you want to match a sequence of characters including new lines followed by that is the positive look ahead, followed by and snippet. What's going to happen now? Yes, this is what happened. It has stopped here and said this is followed by and snippet. Because again, that greedy nature of regular expressions is hitting me back. It has seen and snippet here, but it will. So let me rephrase that, that, uh, greedy stuff. Uh, it will expand every part of the expression to its longest possible form. Even though it has seen and snippet many times, it did not stop. Only when it hit the end of the file, it said, Oh, there's no end snippet here. I will pop. I will make one step back. That is how the, the uh, regular expression um, state machine is working. It just goes one step back and says, now I see it. I will stop here. And that's why it has consumed the entire file all until the very last appearance of this. And that is it, not what I want. So I will do a trick. When you work with regular expressions, you will have to have a full bag of tricks. For example, I will use a negative look ahead. And this doesn't work. I want to select. I want to select characters that are not followed by this. And I want to select as many of them as I can. Now you see that the entire the entire body of this snippet has been selected. But one character is missing. That is the final new line, because that is the character after which the end mark is coming. So I have to add one more character, whatever it is. And then I expect and the snippet and new line. Will it work? Come on, come on. Yes, it works. So I have captured the entire block. And you can see that this is light blue, dark blue. That is another, another capture, another match. You see full match is this, this block. That is match number one. Let's go to match number two. Full match is snippet number two. So I have the regular expression, which is matching one block of my text. It looks awful. It is terrible, but you have to live with that when it comes to regular expressions. And now comes the magic. Every match is also matching groups. Anything that is put inside parentheses will be captured as a group and you can number them. Uh, group number zero is the entire match and then comes group one, two, three, because I have these nested parentheses and every, every pair of parentheses is producing one uh, captured group. You can also give names to groups. For example, I want this number to be captured. Okay. Here is the number one. And then, uh, and then this one is number two. That's what I want to have. You can give them names, number. And here the group number is two. Here the group number is one. And this entire group here is also very important to me. Here it has appeared here. 
it includes the invisible new line here. It is very important. That new line belongs to this content. And I will call it precisely that content. And so I have parsed the entire file. Snippet number one has content, which is this. Snippet number two has content, which is this, etc. The entire file has been processed. Let's check it. Oh, there is a problem. That is why I have uh, pasted the entire file. This snippet is empty. It has nothing in it. And this segment here has missed the end snippet mark. It continued and it thought that this is the end snippet mark it was looking for. So actually, this entire segment was recognized as content. And that is a bug. Because now this entire content was not recognized at all. And if I subdued this regular expression to, to that lexical analysis I told you about, the cursor will stop here and I will have a syntax error here. But it shouldn't be a syntax error because an empty snippet is a legal one. Okay, so this content here, can I move this somewhere? This content here could also be empty. Let's say it like this, or empty. Content can either be all this or empty. Did it make any difference? No, it still misses this one. This is question for you. Do you know why this improved regular expression didn't find the empty snippet? This is the trick question and it again comes back to the question of how regular expressions are matched. They are matched in a greedy way. Greedy way is to first try this branch on the left, and if it fails, try the, the one on the right. And this one didn't fail. It has matched something, which is not what I wanted, but it succeeded. And so, if you want to say that empty is valid, you have to put it on the left-hand side of this operator. Let's see, okay. Wow. No, I put it in, uh, in parentheses, not there, but here. No, this one. Now it works. Because this time the content sub-expression is first matching an empty followed by an end snippet, and it succeeds. And only if that is not the case will it continue to the right-hand side and try to match actual non-empty body. And now I'm satisfied with my, with my regular expression. I must save this somewhere. Okay, let's go to Visual Studio. I will put it here, just not to, to forget it. Okay, now I'm ready to parse that file. I will put this entire file, where is it? Okay, it's here. I will put it into the project, not demo, not the, in the processor. This is the solution. This is the demo project in which I'm going to parse this file. I'll make it part of the, of the project, include, okay. And I will deploy it with the executable. Okay, so now I have the option to read all lines, to read all lines of the file, what's the name? Script LSN, script.lsn. When you are working with files, you must, with textual files, you must know the encoding. This one is in UTF-8. You must know the encoding or otherwise uh, you might get a damaged text in. Read all lines to list, okay, varal lines. Now I have the text, but you cannot, you cannot 
parse multiple lines like this because regular expressions only apply to a single string and you cannot apply them to a list of strings. So one practical trick you will want to apply is to join to join text with uh, with a predetermined end of line, which I will call n uh, backslash n, and all lines will uh, be turned into a into a single string, like it is one line, but there will be a new line delimiter which is signifying line endings, and this backslash n will have to be part of your regular expressions if a new line is meaning, meaningful. Even if it is not white space, you will have one regular expression which is telling that uh, white space and the uh, new line, any number of them, is just white space. So you will have to explicitly recognize that. And there will be that dot any character which is an error. Now you see I have created all regular expressions that will be required by this tool I'm making to work. So I have joined my lines into a string and I have covered all possibilities in that string with three patterns, with only three patterns. So this qualifies as a simple problem. If it were a more complicated problem, it would have 10 or 20 or 100 patterns. But I made a bug. When I joined lines with a new line character, the last line in text will not have a new line character after it. And that is a bug. Because in my format, Every line, every end snippet must have a new line after it. So if I made text like this, parsing would fail. Make sure not to do this, but to append new line to every single line and then join them with an empty string just to glue them together. This way, even the last line will have a new line after it. And then comes the engine, the text processing engine, which is based on regular expressions. It will be a lexer, lexical analyzer, which is immediately producing uh, output from the captured groups, from number and content groups. So there will be no reason for the next stage. Uh, did I mention the next stage? Next stage after lexical analysis is uh, parsing and potentially compiling. Those are very complicated things. If you can process your text with only a lexer, you'll be happy. Okay, so let's build an engine. An engine is based on a sequence of patterns. And I will just create the three patterns I have here. Okay, and the last one is just a dot. So I don't need these anymore. I have built regular expressions which are, ex are explaining the entire content of my, uh, of my text. And now I need the cursor, which is at position zero. I will process input while cursor is before the cursor hits the end of the input text, I will process the next lexeme. How do I do that? I will take patterns and each pattern will match the text, but not from the beginning, but from the current cursor position. I have just turned the sequence of patterns into a sequence of match objects where each match can be successful or not. I'm only interested in those that are successful. And each match can appear at the cursor position or any position beyond it. I'm only interested to know matches that are positioned at the cursor. 
and then I want to pick the longest one. So I will aggregate best and current match. So best length. What happens if two parents of equal length match at the cursor position? That is a bug in your parents. One lexane cannot be understood in two ways. Still, I will retain only the first one. You could choose to throw an exception, which will indicate to you that you have a bug. Anyway, if be uh, length of the best pattern is uh, e equal or greater than current length, then I will retain best, otherwise I will retain current. This is giving me the winner, the winning pattern. And now comes the trick, because I have three of them. I don't know which one of these has matched, but I know that this one has uh, named groups. So if a winner has a group number, which is success and winner grou groups of content is success, if both of them exist, I will simply write them. Pick the number, and that is an integer, winner groups of number, dot value, it, it gives value, and, and uh, content is uh, content, but uh, no, dot value. But this is multi line stuff. I will prepare one helper method that will um, make it prettier. For example, by replacing a new line with this, and I also want to limit length. If uh, value length is uh, greater than the allowed length, then value substring um, minus three plus ellipsis otherwise value okay uh, so i will say this no there is no this limit value to okay this will work uh, this is not integer this is string and i will say two printable 80 characters okay so i will print number space content good this is the entire parser. The entire parser. I'm parsing the entire text file. If I run it, I hope it will not explode. Ah, it exploded. Why? Oh, it's not script. What? Uh, it is script. What? Script. Oh, the letter was missing. Why don't you tell me? Okay, script, good. That is the, the curse of working with text. Yes, it works. No, it doesn't work. No, I made a bug. Because when there is a winner, I need to move the cursor by winner length. So I, I forgot to move the cursor. Okay, this time it should be all right. Do you see the process? I am matching all parents, picking the longest one starting at the cursor position, possibly extracting data from it and moving the cursor by the length of the winner. Okay, now it works. It doesn't limit to 80 characters. Why? What am I doing? Oh, I see it. I see it. I see. It's starting at zero, length minus three. That is the bug. Okay. It's only in the printout. The parser was all right. Now it works fine. Okay. Look at this. This is the entire text file parsed and only these elements that contain the number and the content were printed out. Okay, so I have 59 of them. I think that none of them is missing. I could 
do one interesting thing here by saying value is string empty I want to uh, print it as empty so that I can see them let me show you there are those empty snippets yes number nine is empty and there are more of them here and here and here so this parser this text processor is actually working pretty well for a very simple format of, of this text it doesn't handle errors right now I will demonstrate that to you by making a mistake I will come to the beginning and say that file of uh, something CS okay I'll put it here and start it again there'll be no nothing strange on the output it has just ignored the new command that is probably not what you want you want some indication of an error okay the easiest way to say it is to maybe throw an ex exception or or inject some like same which is uh, indicating an error and like a like same which has kind named error but as i said the easiest way is to throw an exception to put everything here in a try catch block and print the error and not rethrow it and then you need to know that the error has happened regular expressions don't have the way to indicate that they are a positive or a negative match so you will have to do that on your own for example you might turn this sequence of regular expressions into a more complicated structure where regular expression is only one element and the other element is telling whether matching that pattern is a good for you good event for you or not so every pattern here would have to validate the match and these positive ones will just say it's all right but a negative one will throw now I have tuples not just patterns so it will be a tuple here which has a pattern but I want to copy it into a match and validator so that the validator is retained and here where tuple tuple match is success where tuple tuple index is at the cursor okay and now I will retain the tuple which is the best so it's tuple uh, it's a uh, best match is longer than uh, current match length okay and now it won't be just the winner but also the validator for that winner this is getting cryptic but now I will be able to say that winner is whatever comes from the validator I don't I don't like naming these to the same uh, winner is a validated candidate okay okay now I have an improved parser and look what will happen remember that I still have that problem here what will happen if I try to process it now it will report an error this position should be translated into into row and column index but that is another story that is just presentation issue it has hit letter F after the new line so it didn't have problem with new line but it has problem with F because it expects S and snippet so this is a very simple parser 
which is parsing a plain text file and extracting data and even detecting errors. And even it could be able to very precisely explain where the error has occurred. You could start from the index in this text and uh, maybe find the first word beginning at that index and report much more elegantly what is this this is line 10 you would say uh, uh, unexpected word file in line 10 you can produce such a nice error report if you want it and it's all how long is it this entire parser ends at line 50 begins at line 16, so it's only 35 lines of code. This is parameterizing the, the parser, and this is the parser itself. The entire parser is only 30 lines of code, and it can parse any text you want. And you are explaining the text with this array of pattern and validator pairs. So parsing text is very simple in the end if you can make that text uniform, if you can make it deterministic, and you can create regular expressions which are covering every single element of that text. If you cannot do that, then you have a problem with textual format, not with the process of processing it. There is one uh, term for that. Do you know what regular languages are? This script is a language. It is, it is defining a language for, to declare snippets, code snippets. A regular language is the one that can be explained with regular expressions. And that's simple. So your task out there, if you want to use any textual format, is to make it regular and then to process it with these 30 lines of code. Okay, and that's very simple. With this, I would end this demonstration. Next step, when you have a lexer, is to turn it into a parser and possibly into a compiler. GitHub, you can go to GitHub and uh, easy parse I think that's the name there is this library I have built for parsing you can define a grammar of the language define lexemes for example to ignore white space maybe new lines and to define regular expressions for lexemes and then to use those lexemes in the rules, you see? And this tool, this library would build a parser for you so that you don't have to do that. It is this, if you had a complicated structure of lexemes that need to be understood, you better build a parser over it and you better make a compiler later so that you can build an object model out from the text. I might, if you are interested to, to learn that, I might uh, make another talk specifically on that topic. It is very interesting and it, it's even shorter, even though this uh, topic is gruesome, it's very complex. That talk would be much shorter than the one on parsing because you would use the tool to help you with that. Anyway, if you can stay within uh, premises of a very simple straightforward format, which is producing a predictable and fixed structure of lexemes, then you might get away with only the lexical analysis and complete your software without going any, any further than that. And with that, I will conclude this talk. Thank you again for watching this and see you next time.